Should Christians vote and who should they vote for? Trump or Hillary? Now, before we answer this question, we're going to have to go through Revelation 13 and figure out who the beast is, who, who the two beasts are in Revelation 13. Because America is part of that prophecy. Now, before we read Revelation 13, we're going to have to figure out a, a few key things. We're going to have to figure out, we're going to have to let the Bible tell us the definition of a few things, a few Bible symbols. Take some notes, because we are going to learn today. All right, here we go. What is a beast a symbol of in Bible prophecy? Daniel 7 verse 17 says, These great beasts which are four are four kings which shall arise out of the earth. Daniel 7 verse 23 says this, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth. So these beasts are kings or kingdoms. And they aren't just small kingdoms. They're, these are kingdoms on the earth that will rule the earth. So a beast in Bible prophecy is symbolic for a kingdom or a nation or what we call nowadays a superpower. What is the sea or waters a symbol of in Bible prophecy? Revelation 13 and verse 1, And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. Revelation 17 verse 3, So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast, full of the names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. That's the same beast, right? Revelation 17 and verse 15, And he saith unto me, the angel, he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. So the whore sits on this beast, and this beast is rising up out of the sea. So the angel said that the waters that the whore was sitting on, which is the sea, is symbolic for peoples, multitudes, and nations, and tongues. So a sea in, the, in Bible prophecy is symbolic for a densely populated area. What is blasphemy in the Bible? Now, some people claim, some people say, oh, blasphemy, that's, that's just something bad. But what's the actual definition in the Bible? John 10, verses 30 to 33, Jesus speaking, I and my father are one. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, many good works have I showed you from my father. For which of those works do ye stone me? The Jews answered the Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, and because that thou being a man, makest thyself God. So Bible definition for blasphemy number one would be to claim to be God on earth. For a man to claim to be God on earth. That's blasphemy. But for Jesus, it's no problem because he is God. Mark 2 and verse 7, Why doth this man thus speak blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God only? They were talking about Jesus. So for a man to claim that he can forgive sin, that is blasphemy. Blasphemy, definition number 2. For a man to claim to forgive sin. For a man to claim to have the power to forgive sin. So blasphemy definition number one is for a man to claim to be God on earth. That's a blasphemy. Blasphemy definition number two is for a man to claim to have the power to forgive sin. That is blasphemy. What is a day a symbol of in Bible prophecy? In Revelation 13, we found out that the beast, he exercises his power or he continues his power 40 and 2 months. He reigns for 40 and 2 months. He rules the world for 40 and 2 months. Check this out. Revelation 14, Revelation 13, verse 5. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue 40 and 2 months. Now, in Hebrew, a month only has 30 days. In the Hebrew calendar, a month only has 30 days. So 30 days, 42 months, what's that? 1260 days. But what is a day, what is a day symbolic for in Bible prophecy? 
Ezekiel 4 verses 4 through 6. God talking to Ezekiel. He says this, Lie thou also upon thy left side, and lay the, the iniquity of the house of Israel upon it, according to the number of the days that thou shalt lie upon it, it shall bear their iniquity. For I have laid upon thee the years of their iniquity, according to the number of days, 390 days, so shalt thou so shalt thou bear the iniquity of the house of Israel, and when thou hast accomplished them, lie again on thy right side, and thou shalt bear the iniquity of the house of Judah forty days. I have appointed thee each day for a year. So God tells Ezekiel to lie down on one side and lie down on another side a specific amount of days, but he says, I have appointed thee each day for a year. He makes a prophecy. Each day that you lie down is going to be the number of years that, that they will bear their iniquity, Israel and Judah. So he says a day is prophetically a year, literally. Numbers 14 and verse 34. After the number of the days in which ye search the land, even forty days, each day for a year, shall ye bear your iniquities even forty years, and ye shall know my breach of promise. This was when Israel was wandering around. God says you guys are gonna you guys are gonna wander around for 40 days, but really he's saying 40 years. Because he makes a prophecy. He says 40 days, each day for a year, that's 40 years. And did they roam around uh, the wilderness for 40 years? Yes, they did. But God said 40 days, each day for a year. So in prophecy, a day is equal to a year. Now Jesus uses this same day to year principle. Luke 13, verses 31 and 32. The same day there came certain of the Pharisees, saying unto him, Jesus, Get thee out, and depart hence, for Herod will kill thee. And he said unto them, Go ye and tell that fox, Behold, I cast out devils, and I do cures, today, tomorrow, and the third day I shall be perfected. Now, this was at the beginning of Jesus' ministry. He said he will cast out devils and cure people three more days, and then he will be perfected, which means he will be complete. But the thing is, this was at the beginning of Jesus' ministry. He did not do it three more days, and then he was completed. No, he did, he did it three more years. And then on the cross, he said, it is finished. So Jesus used the same day to year principle. He made a prophecy. He said three more days. That's the prophecy. But literally three more years. So a day in Bible prophecy equals to a year. So 1260 days that the first beast is going to reign, which really means 1260 years. Now what is a dragon the symbol of in Bible prophecy? In Revelation 12, we find a pregnant woman, and there was a dragon that was right in front of her. Check this out. Revelation 12, verses 4 and 5. And his tail, the dragon, his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God, unto his throne. Who is that child? Jesus Christ. Jesus was that child. What is a dragon? That's a beast. And what is a beast a symbol of in Bible prophecy? A superpower. Who was the only superpower that tried to kill Jesus when he was born? Pagan Rome. So the dragon is pagan Rome, but that's only the secondary sense. Check out Revelation 12 and verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. So who's the dragon? The devil and Satan. Satan is the dragon. So the dragon is Satan in the primary sense, and the dragon is pagan Rome in the secondary sense. What is a sword a symbol of in Bible prophecy? Ephesians 6 and verse 17. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. So a sword is a symbol for the Word of God. But there's more. Romans 13 and verse 1 through 4. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. Talking about the government, the civil power. For there is no power but of God. 
The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God. And they that resisteth shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror of good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. The sword is also symbolic for the civil power. What is an image in the Bible? What is an image a symbol of? Now, some people might say uh, the Im an image is, is a, an idol, a graven image, right? Yeah, true. But there's another word that's attached to image. Genesis 1 verse 26, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. Genesis 5 and verse 3, And Adam lived 130 years and begat a son in his own likeness after his image. Exodus 20 and verse 4, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above. So a, an image is a likeness. An image of something is a likeness of something. So here are the keys. A beast in Bible prophecy is symbolic for a superpower. The sea or waters in Bible prophecy is symbolic for a densely populated area. Blasphemy is for a man to claim to be God on earth and for a man to claim to have the power to forgive sin. A day in Bible prophecy equal to a year literally. So 1260 days is equal to 1260 years. The dragon in the primary sense is Satan and in the secondary sense is pagan Rome. A sword is a symbol for the civil power or the word of God. An image is the likeness of something or someone. Those are the keys. Now we're going to read Revelation 13. And then we're going to input and apply those keys to Revelation 13. And a whole world of prophecy is going to unfold right before our very eyes. So the question is, who are the beasts of Revelation 13? Revelation 13, starting from verse 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads, ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. Okay, so John saw a beast. What's a beast? A superpower. Rise up out of the sea. What's the sea? A densely populated area. With the name of blasphemy on his head. What is blasphemy? For a man to claim to be God on earth. And for a man to claim to have the power to forgive sin. So, John saw a superpower that rose out of a densely populated area. Who claims to be God on earth and claims to have the power to forgive sin. Just by that alone. Just by the... Those four descriptions, you should already have some. You should already have a superpower in your head that fit though that that fit these description. Verse two, and the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Who is the dragon? Satan. Who else? Secondary sense. Pagan Rome. So, again, we have a superpower that rose out of a densely populated area. He claims to be God on earth. He claims to forgive. He claims to, to have the power to forgive sin. And Satan and pagan Rome gave him his seat, his authority. Let's keep going. Verse 4. And they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? So this superpower is also a religious and political power because they worship the beast. They worshiped the beast and who is able to make war with the beast. So it's a union of church and state. 
Verse 5, And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. There's the blasphemy again. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. What is that? Forty and two months, forty-two months, thirty days per month, right? The Hebrew calendar, thirty days per month, per month that's twelve hundred and sixty days. What is a day symbol of in, in Bible prophecy? A year. So we have a superpower who rises up out of the sea, rises up out of a densely populated area. He will claim to be God on earth. He will claim to have the power to forgive sin. Satan and pagan Rome gave him his authority. And he will rule the world for 1260 years. Now we're narrowing it down even more. Let's keep going. Verse 6. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints, make war with the Christians, and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. So this beast, this superpower, is going to make war with the saints and he will rule the world pretty much. So again, let's review. John saw a superpower that comes out of a densely populated area. He will claim to be God on earth. He will claim to have the power to forgive sin. Satan and pagan Rome gave him his seat. He will rule the world for 1260 years in which he will make war with the Christians. He will kill the Christians. There's only one entity in the world that fit this description and that is the papacy is the papacy a superpower yes did they come up out of a a densely populated area they came out out of rome rome back then used to be the entire the whole of europe does the papacy claim to be god on earth they say that they hold the place of god there in the vatican city do they claim to have the power to forgive sin what about the confessional when you confess your sins to priests. You can only confess your sins to God. Not to priests. They can't forgive you. Did Satan and pagan Rome give him his seat? In 538 AD. According to Justinian's code. Justinian gave Pope Vigilius his authority. His seat. According to Justinian's code. You can look this up. You can Google it. 538 AD, Pope Vigilius became the very first Pope King. So the papacy gained their power 538 AD. Now, did the papacy make war with the saints? Did they kill Christians? Have you guys ever heard of the Inquisition or the Dark Ages? When the papacy were capturing Christians and killing them for the heresy of reading the Bible. Look it up. The Inquisition, the Dark Ages. This is the only entity that fit the description of Revelation 13. The only entity in the world. And we're only talking about the seven descriptions. There are more descriptions in the Bible that fit the papacy. Revelation 13, verse 9 and 10. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. So the papacy, because he led people, he led Christians into captivity, he shall also go into captivity. Because he killeth with the sword, what is the sword? The civil power. And the Bible, because he withheld the Bible from Christians, and the Bible is, is life. So if you take away the Bible from Christians, you're pretty much killing them. So he that leads into captivity, he himself must go into captivity. And he that kills with the sword, he himself must be killed with the sword, the civil power. 1798. If you guys have heard, Napoleon's general, General Berthier. Napoleon sent the gen General Berthier to arrest the Pope because Napoleon was tired of taking orders from the Pope. Napoleon wanted to conquer the world. And he can't conquer the world if the Pope is right there. 1798, the Pope, the papacy, lost their power. The Pope got led into captivity, and he died in prison. He got killed by the civil power. Very funny, right? 538 AD, 1798 AD, how long is that? 1260 
years. 1260 years. Isn't that another description? That the that the, the, the papacy is going to rule 40 and 2 months? 30 days per month. Hebrew calendar, 30 days per month. That's 1260 days, but a day in Bible prophecy is a year. 1260 years. Did the papacy rule for 1260 years? 538 AD, 1798 AD. That's 1260 years. So this first beast in Revelation 13 is none other than the papacy. Revelation 13, starting from verse 11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. So there's another beast. What is that? A superpower. Right after the papacy, right when this, the, the papacy was, was being led into captivity and being killed by the sword, another beast rose up or was starting to rise up. This beast came up out of the earth. And he was a lamb-like beast. Who is the lamb? Christ. So this beast is a Christian nation. But he spake as a dragon. Now, he came up out of the earth. No sea, no water. What is, what is water and sea a symbol of in Bible prophecy? A densely populated area. So this other beast, this lamb-like beast, came up out of the earth with no water. So this beast... This superpower must have come up from a land or a place where there's not a lot of people in it. So a lamb-like beast, a Christian nation or a Christian superpower, who came out of a, a land with not a lot of people in it, around the time that the papacy was being killed by the sword. That's 1798. So this Christian superpower must come out of a land where there's not a lot of people in it around the time of maybe 1700s. So what is the only Christian-like superpower that came out of a land where there's not a lot of people in it around the time of 1700s? The United States of America. A lamb-like beast. A superpower with Christian values. Who came out of a, a, a place where there's not a lot of people in it. Around 1700s, 1776, 1729, those years familiar to you? As It's America, the lamb-like beast. Verse 11 also says that he will speak as a dragon. Who's the dragon? Satan. What does he speak? Lies. He's the father of lies. What, does America speak lies to us? Does America speak lies at all? I remember watching uh, Vladimir Putin talking about the lies of the American, the American government, the lies of Obama, telling people that there are Iranian weapons out there. But Vladimir said they don't exist. They're just using that as an excuse. America is just using that as an excuse to put missiles there in, in other countries. They lied. Check out what the second beast does. America. Verse 13. He doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men and deceive them that dwell on the earth by means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. Who's that beast that he's talking about? The papacy. America is saying, let's make an image of the papacy. What is an image? A likeness. What is the papacy? A union of church and state. A tyrant. So America is going to make a likeness of the papacy. America is going to be the likeness of the papacy. America is going to try to unite church and state. Now, let's read that over again. Verse 13 and 14. And he doth... Great wonder, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast. Okay, Revelation 19 verse 20. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought 
miracles before him with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worshipped his image. In Revelation 19, they called America, the second beast, a false or the false prophet. So America is going to make an image of the beast, the papacy. And America is also called the false prophet. Does that sound familiar to you guys? No? Okay. In the Old Testament, in the Old Testament, God told Moses to make a sanctuary, right? Let's read it. Exodus 25, verses 8 and 9. And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them, according to all that I show thee after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments thereof. So Moses was to build a sanctuary after the image of the things that he saw, after the pattern of the things that he saw. The tabernacle that he saw. Hebrews 9 verse 24. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands. What are the holy places? The sanctuary. Holy place and most holy place. He is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true. The holy places that that were made with hands here on earth are the figures of the true. They are a copy of the true. Where is the true? Revelation 11 verse 19, And the temple of God was open in heaven, and there was in his temple the ark of his testament. So where's the, where's, the, where's the true temple? In heaven. And God told Moses to make a copy of that temple from heaven here on earth. God told Moses to make an image of the temple up in heaven here on earth. Now we know that Satan wants worship. Right? We know that Satan wants to be on the throne. Now the temple of God seats God's throne in the most holy place, in the sanctuary. So if you guys look at the Vatican City, and if you guys look at the Capitol building here in in America, there are similarities. They are actually the same almost. In the Vatican City, you have the church. In America, in Washington, D.C., you have the Capitol building. In front of the church in in the Vatican City, you have the obelisk. In front of the Capitol building, you have the obelisk. Did we make an image of their sanctuary? Because if you look at their, if you look at the Vatican City, it's a courtyard, and then there's a church. There's a courtyard, and then there's a church. There's a sanctuary. If you put those images together, they are exactly the same almost. America had made an image of the Vatican City. Just like when God told Moses to make an image of the tabernacle up there. America made an image of Satan's tabernacle. So are we almost there? Yes, we are. We are already making an image of the papacy, of the beast. God told Moses to make a copy of the tabernacle up there, here, because God wanted to dwell with us here. God to, God wanted to be worshipped down here in his tabernacle. Do you think that's what Satan wants? To make a, an image of his tabernacle from Rome to here in America so that he can come here and dwell here so that we can worship him? Let's, let's look at it again. God told his prophet Moses to make an image of the tabernacle from up there. Now we got... Satan, the dragon, and the beast, and he's telling the false prophet, remember, America is the false prophet, he's telling the false prophet to make an image of his tabernacle so that he can come here to be worshipped. God tells his true prophet Moses to make an image of the tabernacle from up there here so he can come here and dwell with us. And we have Satan telling the false prophet America to make an image of his tabernacle so that he can come here to be worshipped. So who should we vote for? That's the question now, right? Should we vote and who should we vote for? If you want to vote, that's on you. Here's a little bit of an advice. If you're going to vote, take a look at the candidates, right? Take a look at the candidates and see 
which one is likely to be the one that will advance the making of the image of the beast. We already have it physically. We already have it physically. We don't have it spiritually yet. We're almost there. See which one? Is it Trump? Does, is Trump in association with the Pope? I don't know. What about Hillary? Is Hillary in association, in association with the Pope? So if you're going to vote and you want to delay the making of the image of the, be of the beast, go for the one who does not have, who is not in association with the Pope. But if you want to, if you want to vote and you want to advance, I don't know why you'd, you, you'd want to do that. But if you, if you want to advance the making the image of the beast, then vote for the one who you know is in association with the Pope. But then again, our vote doesn't really matter because we cannot stop prophecy. We're running out of time. So if you want to vote, go ahead and vote. Who? You decide. You make your, you make your research and see which one is going to advance the making of the image of the, be of the beast and who's going to delay the making of the image of the beast. But I believe the most important thing is that we should repent We should realize that we are sinners. We should repent of our sins, get baptized, love God, and keep His commandments. Praise God always. Mm -hmm.